Hello everybody and welcome to your third chapter in your Java E7 tutorial. Today we'll be talking about why Java E requires that you need to connect to multiple components like databases, messaging, services, etc. We can create these connections by using resources. Now let's jump into it. What is a resource? Now a resource is a program object that provides a connection to systems like a database or a messaging system. Now how are resources used? You would inject resources into your Java class by using the at resource annotation in an application and their JNDI name would usually be used. Now a JNDI name is basically a separate name for um, a, an object. Let's say uh, Pablo over here has this huge name that we kind of don't want to say uh, the whole thing so we'll just call him Pablo. This is the same thing for um, resource objects, where resource objects has have huge names, but you can call them by their JNDI name for your convenience. Now let's take a look at data source objects. Now data source objects are a set of properties that identify and describe a real world data source it represents. These properties include the name of the database, data server, and network protocol used to communicate with the server. To store, organize, and retrieve data, most applications use a relational database, which is just a database that is sorted using tables. In the JDBC API, databases are accessed using the data source objects. In Glassfish Server, a data source is called a JDBC resource. Now let's take a look at how to access a data source. Applications access a data source by using something called a connection. A data source object can be thought of as a factory for connections to the particular data source that the data source instance represents. A data source object may also be registered with the JNDI naming service. If so, an application can then use the JNDI, naming, uh, JNDI API to access this data source object, which can then be used to connect to the data source it represents. What that means, again, is this factory has its really long name. What you can do is you can put a name on that factory, let's say Ford, and whatever you call in Ford, you'll call this factory and this factory will create connections and these connections can then connect to your, um, your databases and whatever and so on. Now let's take a look at connection pools, which are actually pretty cool. Connection pools are a group of ready to use reusable connections that are created at the beginning of an application creation. What that means is that you can now use these connections immediately when you start up your thing. Now, this is pretty useful because creating connections are quite expensive for the server. So the server contains a pool of connections that are retrieved whenever necessary. This greatly increases application performance and reaction time. And that's it. That's all there is about resource creation. And in the next chapter, we'll be talking about uh, injection, so st stay tuned for that. And I'll see you in the next video.